welcome to the podcast, Happy and Single. I'm your host, Joseph Anderson. You can find me on Instagram at the It's Possible Guy. And today is episode 119, and it's entitled, Are You Moving Towards What You Desire? Now, last night I was reading in the Book of Mormon, which is another similar book of scripture, kind of like the Bible, that also testifies of Christ. And I was, I was reading in a chapter, 1 Nephi 4, and you now verse 6 has always, you know, I've always liked verse 6. It says, And I was led by the Spirit, not knowing beforehand the things which I should do. However, last night, the thing that really caught my attention was that in verse 5, when it says, I, Nephi, crept into the city and went forth towards the house of Laban. Now, in this particular story, he was, Nephi was trying to get the brass plates and Laban had them. And so what did he do? He, he moved forth towards the direction of Laban's house. Now, here's what I've seen in my own life. You know, so often we don't know what to do. And so we don't try to do anything. You know, we, we want to start a business, but we don't know how to even start. So we don't do anything. We want to ask out a a person or we want to find the person of our dreams, but we do nothing in that direction to look for the people we might be interested in. There's a great quote by a religious leader of mine named Russell M. Nelson, and he says, The Lord loves effort because effort brings rewards that can't come without it. What What an amazing quote because the Lord really desires that we do something. Yes, he is willing to bless our lives. Yes, he, he is more than willing to help us. But generally only when we help ourselves. He will keep us alive. But if we want to thrive, we have to be part of that equation as well. There's a story told about a, a, a pastor, a minister that is out driving around and comes to this beautiful farm. And he tells the man, this is a very nice farm the Lord has blessed you with. And the man says, yeah, well, you should have seen it when he had it all to himself. It is a combination between the work that we do and the Lord's help that creates the results we're after in our lives. I know for years as a single person, I just kind of, you know, part of it, I felt that because I wasn't married, because that hadn't worked out in my life, I just didn't care about the other aspects of life. It was almost like, you know what, Heavenly Father, if you're not going to provide me with the, the girl that I want to be with, you know, the, find the, the girl of my dreams, like, then I just don't want to do anything. And you know what he pretty much said? He's like, okay, you, could, you can make that choice. And the interesting thing is how many other people, and you might do this yourself, but if you look around Every single person has been through some sort of adversity in their life that doesn't seem fair. And so we stop moving towards the things that we want. It's like, well, if I can't have that, I'm going to sit here and do nothing. And he's like, okay, you can do that. That's your choice. Guys, we have agency. Every one of us has agency. Every one of us is inspired, but we think we have to have a perfect path. So I want you to do something for me. I want you to go ahead and imagine that you're planning a trip to go to New York City and you're driving and you're driving cross country. And before you even go on this trip, I want you to write down exactly the destination you're going to travel, every roadblock you're going to come across, every construction zone that's going to slow you down every other thing on the road that might slow you down, every pit stop that you're going to make, every place that you're going to eat. I want you to give me a perfect plan of how you're getting to New York City before you even go out the door. Now, now most of you guys realize that would be absurd, right? And why would that be absurd? Because you don't know. Well, if I turn to go out my driveway left, And there's a bunch of cars blocking the road. You know, somebody's moving in or something. Or for whatever reason, the road's blocked. I'm going to go right. I'm not going to sit very long and think, oh my goodness, I, I, I have to go left. I just have to go left. 
All you need to do is get in the direction that you desire to go. I mean, I've the, the more that you get involved in something, the more that you're going to learn how it works. That's just the nature of life. You can't know what you don't know. It just doesn't work that way, guys. Like, I love when I sit down and write my book. I, especially when I, when I wrote the first draft, I didn't know what was going to happen. I just had to sit down and, and basically, you know, think about it and counsel. Like, I mean, I, I counseled many times with Heavenly Father in the course of writing and editing this book. All the good stuff comes from him, but I still have to write it. I, I still have to sit down and write it. Everything that is great in our lives is a co-creation with Heavenly Father, where all we do is show up. And he's so excited that we're showing up and doing the things that we want to do that he's like, yeah, I'll help you. I mean, how many movies have you seen where the character finally starts to get engaged in life and starts to move towards what they desire? And all of a sudden, all kinds of opportunities present themselves. Things that were there all along presented themselves that they didn't even know. I, I really believe that's the way each of our lives work. I mean, I want to ask you, what is the thing that you want right now in your life? Now, since you're not actually here to answer, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play along this line of you know, finding the person of your dreams. Finding the perfect person for you. What have you done in that regards? Like, not even just, you know, I talked about last, I think it was last week, that you don't have to be perfect to go after what it is that you want. Like, if you stopped necessarily working on yourself or worrying about working on yourself and just started going after the people that you were interested in, you might get some dates. It's this double-edged sword because on one hand, I do know that the more attractive we make ourselves, our energy, our, you know, our physical bodies, our, like, our, you know, me <sighs> so I can put this, um, just make, make yourself as attractive as possible, the more options you're going to have available to you. But at the same time, I, I want you guys to do things for you. Because when push comes to shove and things get hard, when we're doing them for ourselves, like we're generally not as likely to stop. So what is one tiny step that you could do to move in a small direction towards finding the person of your dreams? Yeah, one time I talked to a uh, professional matchmaker who's a friend of mine, and she happens not to be a, a member of my faith, but she did share with me when she gets people that hire her as a matchmaker that are members of my faith, she'll oftentimes go and sit outside that this uh, b these beautiful buildings we call temples, she'll sit outside the temple and she'll wait. She really will. She'll sit and wait, and if somebody comes along that doesn't have that doesn't have a ring on that she thinks looks like an awesome person, she'll tell them about what she's doing. I love that example. Because so often we don't move towards anything we want. I think we're so scared of like not having it happen. But, you know, for, you know, there's been different girls that I've pursued over the years. But I've never really, really pursued. What, what would pursuit look like? It would look like getting creative. Talking to them, finding out about them, learning about them, and then asking them to do different dates. 
that are interesting to them. It would be listening to them. It would be sending, you know, a, a few simple texts here and there. We worry so much about getting things wrong that we don't even do what we know how. You know, we, we get so at our head, guys, about anything it is that we're going after. Oh my goodness, what are they going to think? Well, it doesn't really matter what they think. Because when you're thinking about what they're going to think, you're just lost in the thoughts in your head. You're just lost in your, your, your thinking and your, your habitual thinking. It's not up to you what they're going to think. I mean, I would, I would say go into every situation looking forward with an eye of faith. This is a scripture I shared with one of my clients yesterday that I think is really relevant to this conversation. And it's in James 1, 5, and 6. That's in the Bible. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. And then it goes on in verse 8 and says, A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Guys, when we're of two minds, we're unstable. We're on the fence. It's like if you've ever seen somebody walk a, walk a tightrope or balance or be on a fence. It takes a lot of training to do that. And I, I've never tried to walk on a tightrope, but I can imagine it, it might be pretty challenging and you have to learn to probably silence your mind and learn to balance and all kinds of stuff. When you go forward in faith to what you desire and understand that you're going to have people around you that aren't going to agree with you, it might be your family, it might be your friends, it might be anybody around you, you will have resistance. It's, it's funny though, because when we're in the gym, we'd be, we'd be really upset if we walked in and there were no weights, but then we get to life and it's like, oh my goodness, I'm feeling resistance. I'm having all these these crazy leprechaun thoughts. Okay, you don't have to listen to them. Just let them be. You don't have to have a perfect path. Really, the Lord just wants effort. He just wants you to try, and then He's so willing to help you out. So I ask again, what is it that you desire? And if you don't know entirely what you desire, but you think you might want to try something out, try that out. Try moving in that direction. You know, for years I waited around just because I didn't know the right next step to take in, in growing my business. And you know the times that I just throw myself in and just connect with people? Good things happen. All we have to do is keep moving our feet. There's a great quote by Will Rogers that says, even if you're on the right track, if you're not moving, you're going to get run over. So if you know your track, just take steps forward. Don't think about the perfect next step. And now I apologize, guys. On some of my podcasts, I have talked about being shown every tiny step. Sometimes we miss it and it's right in front of us. It's like I, I enjoy doing puzzles. And it's so funny how you can have the, right, the exact piece right in front of you. You just don't realize it goes there. But the only way that I figure out that that's the right piece is by trying it and also trying a lot of other pieces that don't fit. When we stop worrying about living a perfect life with no mistakes, 
and not having the pressure of making those mistakes. It's like the more that I can't find a puzzle piece, sometimes the more I start thinking about it and overthinking about it. The only thing that you can control is showing up. I mean, even on these podcasts, guys, I have no idea sometimes what's going to come out. I know that they're led, I know that I'm guided, and I know that, you know, much of this really does come from the Spirit, except when I get in the way. But sometimes you just have to move forward anyways. Like, once you've had the peace and about your path of moving forward, that's all you need. I think sometimes we show up to our task or to our goal or to our desire. And we show up thinking that every single moment we need to feel peace. I don't feel every, I don't feel peace every single moment that I go to the gym and I, and I work out. I mean, plenty of times I have tons of thoughts going through my head. But I just go forward anyways. There's a difference between having some thinking around doing something and of being stopped. There's a big difference. Oftentimes when I do have a lot of thinking, it's when I get quiet that the Spirit's able to teach me what it really wants to teach me. I truly believe that Heavenly Father wants you to go in the direction of your goals and your dreams. Here's a quote I share a lot by a religious leader named Jeffrey R. Holland. God expects you to have enough faith and determination and enough trust in Him to keep moving, keep living, keep rejoicing. In fact, He expects you not simply to face the future. That sounds pretty grim and stoic. He expects you to embrace and shape the future, to love it and rejoice in it and delight in your opportunities. God is anxiously waiting for the chance to answer your prayers and fulfill your dreams, just as He always has. But he can't if you don't pray, and he can't if you don't dream. In short, he can't if you don't believe. And if you need a cheerleader, tell Heavenly Father your goals. Tell him your desires. He is your father, and he loves to hear what's going on in your life. Plenty of times we kneel down and pray, and we feel just this, I don't know, an angsty feeling. If you just sit and be still, that will go away. I believe a lot of that's the adversary trying to get you not to pray. And Heavenly Father wants to know about what's going on in your life. He wants to know the steps that you're taking. I mean, plenty of times I actually do. I, I, when, when, I, when I pray at night, it's like, hey, this is what I did. And this is what I, you know, and this is what I didn't do. You know, and even in the morning, we can pray and say, hey, this is what I'm going to do today. Will you please bless my path and make it fruitful? It is the hand of, the, the hand of God that blesses each of our lives and blesses each of our opportunities. There's a scripture in 2 Nephi 32.9, which is also in the Book of Mormon, that says, You shall pray unto the Father in the name of Christ that he will consecrate thy performance unto thee, that thy performance may be for the welfare of thy soul. I love that idea of consecrating our performance to the Lord. The other day when I did, when I did pray before I practiced the guitar, I, I did notice that I was able to play a little bit faster. I understand that when we ask Heavenly Father for help, he provides it. It's up to him how, how much help he does provide. But I want to ask you guys, uh, once again, are you moving towards what you desire? Are you showing up in the arenas you want to show up? 
You know, if, if, if you happen to want to write a book, are you showing up and, write, and spending time each day writing that book? If you want to become a musician, are you showing up each day and you know, writing songs and practicing your music and learning from other people? Are you showing up in the arenas you want to show up? Like, I don't remember which, uh, which philosopher said it, but he said, if you want to be a writer, write. Now, you may think that you don't know what to write. Sit down, write a sentence, and then write another sentence, and then write another sentence. I mean, it's astounding when you look back and realize, oh my goodness, this was, I, I was able to create this. I was able to be led to create this. It really is. It's just about moving our feet. You don't have to always feel inspired. Once you have peace, once you have joy about what it is you want to create, you can just go create it. So what is it you want to create? What is it during the course of this recording today that you have heard that you've said, oh my goodness, you know what I'd love to do? I'd love to start exercising. I'd love to get an amazing shape. I'd love to, you know, do a, a physique competition. Like I'd love to, I mean, things that even seem just possibly so out far of your comfort zone. You know, I know a, I heard from a friend recently that another friend of ours was going to do their very first physique competition, you know, and they're, and they're in their late thirties or so. How awesome is that? Like, it doesn't matter where you are at. On the lifespan of life. You have however many years you have. It just matters what you want to go forward and do with your life. So stop letting all the thinking get in the way. And just go forward. Again, as Henry David Thoreau says, if one advances confidently in the direction of his dreams and endeavors to live the life which he has imagined, he will meet with a success unexpected in common hours. But it says you have to advance confidently in the direction of your dreams. Move forward as if you've never been hurt. Move forward as if you've never failed before. Just move forward. And the days that you do mess up and that you do fail, it's okay. Get up the next day and try again. You know, I think happiness, even as a single person, the times that I feel happiest are the times that I'm involved in creation. When I'm writing my book, when I'm sitting, when I'm drawing, when I'm doing all kinds of things. Those are the times that I feel happiest. So whatever it is that you want to create in the world, start creating it. Stop worrying about it. And just start doing it. And if you're really struggling, hey, come on one of, our, one of the calls that I host. I host generally a few calls each month that are ask me anything calls. You can come on, you can receive, you know, free, basically free coaching, you know, so just come on. You can see more of that on the happyandsingle.com website. But whatever it is that you're wanting to do, move confidently in the direction. Because as I said, with the example of going to New York City, you have to move forward before you can even see the trials, the potholes, and everything else you're going to face on the road. You're not going to know until you start moving. There's a quote by a man named W.H. Murray, who was a Scottish mountaineer, that says, Until one is committed, there is hesitancy, the chance to draw back, always ineffectiveness, concerning all acts of initiative and creation. There is one elementary truth, the ignorance of which kills countless ideas and splendid plans, that the moment one definitely commits oneself, then providence moves to. All sorts of things occur to help one that would never otherwise have occurred. A whole stream of events issues from the decision, raising in one's favor all manner of unforeseen incidents, meetings, and material assistance, which no man could have dreamt would have come his way. I learned a deep respect for one of, Ma one of Goth's Ma couplets. Whatever you can do or dream you can, begin it. 
Boldness has genius, power, and magic in it. Now, this this is a quote, but one of my mentors, Michael Neal, makes a makes an interesting um, comment on this, and he basically says, like, you know, well, he always thought that was about commitment, and then he went on to say, you know, finally he read the part that comes before this, which says we hadn't really done anything, but when I said that nothing had been done. I erred in one important matter. We had definitely committed ourselves and were halfway out of our ruts. We had put down our passage money, booked a sailing to Bombay. This, too, this, this may sound too simple, but is great in consequence. Until one is committed, there is hesitancy, dot, dot, dot. So all they did was book a ticket to get to Bombay. All you've got to do is start taking steps in the direction of your goal. If you took one tiny step in the direction of your goal every single day, you'd be amazed at how much quicker you'd get there than by doing nothing. I I know you think you don't know what to do. I know you think you have to have everything perfect and in line. And I know that we carry plenty of weight of our past decisions with us and our past failures. When you just take a moment and be still, All of that can fade away, and you just have to engage in the process of creation. So once again, are you moving towards what you desire? And if not, start today. Whatever it is that you felt inspired to do as you've listened today, I want to invite you to go do it. And if you want to share with me, feel free to Reach out on Instagram or comments on any of my posts there about what you're doing at the It's Possible Guy. Guys, go out and start living the life that you imagine today, and you'll be much, much closer to it. Now, if you've made it to this point in the podcast, I'd like to invite you to go ahead and subscribe to the podcast. I don't know how you got here, but that way, if you ever want to get back here again, It's right there for you in your subscriptions. And if you haven't already joined us, one of the really cool things that I do that's free for anyone that would like to participate is each Monday morning at 10 a.m. Arizona time, I host a group coaching call for Happy and Single. Anyone is welcome to come on and you can even receive a little bit of one-on-one coaching time with me depending on how many people are in the call. Now, every now and then that schedule changes, so you can go to the website happynsingle.com to be able to look at the schedule and also to be able to find the link to the Zoom room. Now, at the same time, if you would prefer a more one-on-one type of coaching experience where you can sit down and share your hopes and dreams and and just kind of the stuff going on in your world. Then there's another option available for you as well. Now, the bulk of my business is actually doing one-on-one coaching. If that's something you're interested in exploring, I've got a few spots open in my coaching practice. You can just message me on Instagram at the It's Possible Guy, and we can sit down and have a chat. And it doesn't matter where you're at in the world. I've worked with people across the world. I do everything over Zoom, so it actually makes it pretty easy. Thank you guys so much again for listening. And go out and live your adventure. Thank you.